Hello and welcome to the Sun One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video uh, Spot Micro Part 25 I'm still playing around with the new servos getting it all calibrated and working on the new class with the program. So I just thought I'll give you a bit of an update on where I'm at. So you can see in my picture in picture I've got Spot Micro sitting on my desk it's currently in the rest position and I've got my robot lab in the background so if I go to the Python screen um, you can see here I've got a, a rest.py and this is not saved anywhere it's just on the computer but I do have a gesture called rest so I'm just calling that gesture now to give you an idea of what's in that gesture See if I can I'll get it up here. So what we have is in the gesture rest. Uh, it prints for debugging purposes that it's moving to the rest position. I may try update the current servo status for each of the legs. I then get data on where the legs are in the X, Y, and Z coordinate rail so this is actually the average of all of the leg positions so in theory it should give me the average height of all the legs and x y and z positions in theory if i have all of the legs directly or all the feet directly under each of their shoulders they should be all zero z of course will always be below the robot somewhere from 94 millimeters or lower so it'll always return a value so based on that i can say okay let's let's get the current position of all the legs uh, move the robot so that the height comes down to 100 millimeters or so the robot is 100 millimeters off the the floor and then move into the rest position when the these servos are very fast compared to the last lot I had in them and when it moves into that rest position it's actually quite violent in the way it does it so by setting up that move robot relative to the robot's plane of reference in a stepped fashion it will actually slow down the movement towards the rest position before it just collapses and I'll show that in a demonstration shortly. I'm also using this uh, rest to stand. I've actually got it copied into the Pi, Pi code so I can edit it as I go. This does need a little bit of work on it still. And you'll see what I mean. At the moment, I've got it moving the servos directly. So it's going to move all the servos at once using this legs.move servos. And it's going to rope. This is actually a relative position, so it's going to add 46 degrees to each of the current servo positions for the arms. This first digit is for the shoulders, and this zero is for the wrist, so we're not moving any of those servos. And in this case, it's set to do it in two steps. Okay, so let's get back to my robot lab and this is the rest of stance I've, this is the one I copied in and I've edited quite a, a little bit uh, for a start I had to take out all the, the tabs here because it's not in a function and I found that my robot lab does practice ads over that so the first thing I'm doing is I'm rotating the legs 60 degrees now from the rest position these legs are at 133 degrees by default now i have got a script here which actually gets the robot's position which is done and when i executed the end of the last command uh, or rest command i got the full status from the robot and you can see the current position of each of the uh, 
servos. So in this case, the arms are all set at 133 degrees. So our command rester stand is going to add 60 degrees, which is going to put it past the 180 degree mark, which means the feet will be behind the robot center of, or behind the shoulders for each of them. And there is a reason for that. And these servos are not as strong as I would have hoped. That could be a factor of the cable I'm using for the testing as well. But we'll execute this and you can see how it goes. So the back leg is currently drawing 6.4 amps and I can actually bring that up. So you can see here it's spiked up very high and then come down. And I think that's where half of my battle is. Now, all this weight is currently resting on this servo here and the matching one at the back. And those servos are starting to warm up. The current did draw, drop down to 2.8. So there's a lot of springiness in those servos. They're not as strong as I would like. There's a bit of warmth starting to show up in these back ones in particular, where all the weight ends up. And that can melt the plastic in the, uh, the legs. I've actually run into that before, where I've melted the legs because the servo was carrying far too much load and eventually burned out. So trying to work out how to get around this problem of the lack of strength in the servos. I can up the voltage a little bit more and see if I can get some more voltage through. I could try reducing the length of my wire, which would reduce the voltage drop while it's trying to run. I could be losing a lot more voltage than I think I am, but it's not causing the Raspberry Pi to reset or anything. Now, the other thing I was going to show you was the rest. And we'll execute that. So you can see it lowers itself down and then it slams into the desk. The Python down here is actually slow to come up from time to time, particularly when I've got the computer busy uh, doing other things like recording a video. So this is something I am still working through. While I've got most of the kinematics, it will accurately position the legs uh to a, a reasonable value i am having trouble where i can get quite a bit of movement out of these servos uh against against the servos when they're out moving or they can't drive into the correct position so if i put this back up on a stand and i'm bumping the camera a bit here now you may be able to see that red line on over here. Now that line is actually vertical. I don't think my camera is, but the line is. And there's actually a matching line on the bottom down here. And that's coming from my laser level. So if I actually tell this to stand, if I click in the right spot, right, so you can see the front leg is slightly forward, so I might have to do a bit more calibration on that leg. But if I move to this back leg, oops. So this is our pivot point for the shoulder just here. And we've got our crosshair on the back foot dead on so that one is actually calibrated quite well i've actually gone to a lot more trouble on the back ones to make sure they are calibrated uh the problem is the robot is of the belief that that foot is four and a half mil further back and it makes its moves or the planning for those moves is based on where it believes the feet are so at the moment it believes the foot is actually back here by about four and a half, nearly five mil. And there is actually that much slop in this. 
which makes calibrating it a little more difficult. There is, that's a lot of movement to have in the leg when you're trying to balance a robot. The robot has got a little bit of weight to it. Um, I think it's around three, four kilo. And that's a fair amount of weight to be carried on those servos. So I do know the lengths of these, uh, the arms and their throws, since I've measured and calculated them all out. Uh, and I can calculate the torque that's on those servos and I do think I'm getting up close to their limit. So we may have to completely redesign the shoulders and joints, uh, all the joints and the way they work so that we can get a, a better run at it. The 35 kilo servos I had been using and that's these ones. If I can get that up. So these servos have got plenty of torque, but they won't operate at the high voltage I really need them to run at. So I'm going to have, at the moment it's a compromise. I'm running slightly lower torque uh, servos. They're rated at closer to 20 kilo as opposed to 35. And it is impacting the accuracy of it. There's a lot of slop in the shoulder joint and I think that's where most of my issue is coming from is just that one joint. I'm really not sure how I'm going to fix that yet. There is a little bit of slop within the shoulder but not much. It's all in this the arm joint because it's not supported. The front one's not as bad because it has got the additional support over the top. When I was trying to uh, balance or oh, get the auto level and auto balance to work it was doing some strange things with the left foot and I have got a video clip I'll insert in here of it actually doing that where the left leg swings out to the left and then comes back again without the robot actually doing anything else I'm not sure why it was just doing that with one leg it does the cut program code is set up to actually run all all legs calculated off that same initial measurement reading so I don't know why one leg was moving out while the others were staying put but that'll do for this video it's an update showing some of the frustration I've had in trying to get this program to work uh, I will keep working on it trying to battle through and see if I can find a solution if it, all the code is being updated almost as I'm working on it you know near enough live to the github so you can download where i'm at right right now and see how it's running if you're working on the bleeding edge of the program as well uh which is much further ahead than most of the videos are you can talk to me in discord uh you might have an idea that is far better than what i've got going at the moment and yeah we'll try it if if uh it helps you can also do a video chat in the discord and we can naturally see if we can't figure out what's going on i think a lot of the issue i'm having at the moment is that the while i'm sending the servos to a position i don't think they're quite making it there and that's causing me uh errors so the robot falling over backwards when it's trying to get up is because the servos didn't quite get to where they should be and the back legs were too far forward as a result causing the robot to fall over backwards i have it have had it turn off its power a couple of times doing that when it falls over onto its back normally when i've got it on the floor and i've had it on the floor because it's not as far to fall if it rolls That'll do for this video. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to help the channel further, I do have a Patreon account and you can join my patrons, Go Lucky, El Morales 45, and White Wolf in supporting the channel. The link for the Discord is down in the description. By all means, come in and ask questions. 
uh, make comments. I do actually read all of the comments on my Discord and I also read all the comments on the YouTube videos as well. And we'll see you in the next video.